we're, uh, let's go to the Word of God. We're still on our Heart for the House series. So, uh, can you say Heart for the House? Mas malakas po dyan. Heart for the House. So, for those of you who are not here for the past uh, two weeks po, para po nandun tayo sa same page, yung Heart for the House, can we show it? Heart for the House is our annual one-time sacrificial offering that goes above our regular giving or our regular tithes and offerings po to move the church forward into the vision God is calling us to. This is our second year na ginagawa po natin ito. And uh, sabi po dyan, above and over our tithes and offerings. We still give our tithes and offerings every Sunday, but once a year we are giving a sacrificial offering so that the vision of God dito po sa Darak City Church will become a reality. We, we understand that we are not just called just to pray and, and support yung, yung vision, but we are also called to sow a seed, especially for those people who call the Rock City Church their home. Okay po? At uh, iipunin po natin to for four months. Wag po kayo mag-alala, hindi po natin to ibibigay ngayon. Iipunin natin to for four months and then ibibigay po natin sa November 19. 19, I think. No? Pangatlong Sunday po ng November. So starting today, listen, all eyes on me, starting this Sunday, starting today, let's pray for that specific amount that God will give us. You pray for it, dun sa amount, and then we will come back next Sunday for our commitment Sunday, and we will be handing you a Heart for the House commitment card or a pledge card, and there we will write that amount that we are praying and believing God for to give on November 19. Maliwanag po? Maliwanag po? No? Pag-pray na po natin ngayon, magkano po yung sinasabi ng Holy Spirit sa atin na amount na iipunin natin ng apat na buwan para ibigay po natin sa November 19. Okay po? Parang malungkot po kayo. Halos. Amen! Okay, so let's go to the Word of God. Uh, let's remain standing and let's open our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 14, or so, sorry, verse 4 to 15. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 15, sabi po dito, Listen, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Verse 5, And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And you must commit yourselves, listen, wholeheartedly to these commands that I am giving you today. Listen, we must commit daw po yung ating buhay, ang ating, at ating buong sarili dito, no? wholeheartedly sa command na ito. Anong command po yun? And that is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Verse 7, look at this. Repeat them again and again to your children. Sino po dito may mga anak na? Can I see hands? Sabi dyan, ulit-ulitin. Repeat them again and again and again to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. In short, it means whatever you are doing every day, have this in mind to repeat that over and over again. Ulit-ulitin mo ituro sa yung mga anak. Ano pa po sabi dito? Tie them to your hands and wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Verse 10, The Lord your God will soon bring you into the land He swore to give you when He made a vow to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is a land with large, prosperous cities that you did not build. build. The houses will be richly stocked with goods you did not produce. You will draw water from cisterns you did not dig, and you will eat from vineyards and olive trees you did not plant. When you have eaten your fill in this land, listen, be careful not to forget the Lord. How many of you believe that pag yung buhay po natin ay nandun sa mountaintop, sometimes we forget the Lord? 
when we are blessed, sometimes we forget the Lord. Kaya sinabi po dito, no? Pag sagasagana ka, huwag mong kakalimutan yung Panginoon pag nandun na kayo. Sabi po dito. Ano pa po sabi? Be careful not to forget the Lord who rescued you from slavery in the land of Egypt. You must fear the Lord your God and serve Him. When you take an oath, you must use only His name. Last two verses, you must not worship any of the gods of neighboring nations. For the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. Can you say that with me? Jealous God. And lastly, His anger will flare up against you and He will wipe you from the face of the earth. Pinagpala na po yung salita ng Panginoon and I want to entitle this word. Are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Amen. I want to entitle this word, Building a House for All Generations. Amen. Say that with me. Building a House for All Generations. Can you say, all generations? All generations. Oh, dapat sabay tayo yung, dapat may feelings yung, oh, one, two, three, go. All generations. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon at makakaupo na po tayo. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Once again, good morning, the Rock Fam. Good morning. Amen. Kumusta po yung gising ng bawat isa? Meron po dito, nakapag-almusal na? Nakapagkape na? Amen. Again, reminding lahat po ng men mamaya, walang tatakas. Gusto po namin kayong makasama. Alam niyo po yon, mabilis lang po yung, yung bowling natin mamaya. No? Wala man po yung, siguro, isang oras lang po siguro yon. Ganun lang po kabilis. No? And uh, let's continue to support yung pong mga uh, activities natin uh, gatherings po ng ating church. Amen. Let's go to the Word of God. First po, um, nandito pa rin po tayo sa series natin about Heart for the House. And last Sunday, medyo maanghang talaga yung word natin about loving the church. At sabi po natin that we cannot say that we love the church if, alam mo yun, we regularly attend and we do not commit on, on supporting it financially no but with our numbers today i can safely say na hindi naman po ata nagtampo yung iba sa preaching ng sunday amen oh tinamay ka tabi mo sabi mo congrats you're here sabi mo congrats nandito ka kala ko po mahahati tayo but sabi ko nga po sa inyo i'm uh, prepared i'm ready sa, sa consequences but it only shows that we love the lord and uh, we're here to stay and to support yung pinapagwapo ng Panginoon dito sa The Rock. Amen. So I want to start with a question. When you think of The Rock City Church, gusto ko po kayong tanungin, what do you see? Anong na-envision nyo? Ano yung nakikita nyo? May pangitain ba? What do you see? I pray that when, I, I pray that when we think of The Rock, we see a home. Can you say that with me? Home. That's why we call this this place, no? We call this church a place to call home. I pray pag sinabi nating home, we, we, we think of everyone. We think of the people. We think of the family of God. And a home, I pray na makita po natin to that this is a home for everyone to gather. Listen, church. Not just for now, but for generations. O ulitin ko po, ulitin ko. I pray na makita natin that this home is for everyone to gather, but not just for today, not just for now, but for generations. Kaya gusto ko pong i-import sa inyo as early as now, church, that this house is a house for all generations. It's a place where our kids 
and grandkids will thrive by pursuing a life with Jesus and growing in His Word. Pag yung sinabi mong home, ito po yung lugar kung saan nakikita natin yung ating mga anak at ating mga apo ay natututo sa Panginoon. Nakikilala nila yung ating Panginoon. Even though this place is not our permanent place, but regardless, we will treat this place like ours. Kahit saan pa po tayo ilipat ng Panginoon, hanggang ibigay po ni Lord yung pinagpe-pray natin na building. Amen. Amen. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. So I hope po nakikita nyo na yung lugar pong ito ay lugar kung saan ang mga anak nyo at apo nyo ay nakikita nyong nakikilala yung Panginoon, nakikilala yung kanyang salita. A place where friendships are forged, families po ay nare-restore, where faith is ignited, and we, be, we, we dare to believe God for the miraculous. I hope you can appreciate yung, yung family po natin dito, no? na minsan, sa buong week, Monday to Saturday, how many, you, how many of you na feel nyo minsan, you feel defeated, you feel depressed, you feel lonely, you feel na parang uh, uh, yung mundo po ay pinagbagsakan ka, and then on a Sunday, you will come to church, your, your, your fire will be ignited again, yung, yung faith mo will be, will be fired up again. You will hear the word, you will be restored, refueled. Yun po yung kagandahan ng church na dapat i-appreciate po natin. This is not just an ordinary place that we go to every week. You need to appreciate what God is doing in this family. You need to start loving the church. Kung paano po ito minahal ng Panginoon. Tama po ba? We also think of an army of God. From my, 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 my position here, seeing you all, I'm not just seeing people, individuals. I'm also seeing an army of God. Amen. Army of God ready to advance God's kingdom. Ready to change the world like the disciples who turned the world upside down. Amen. Imagine what, what, what we can do when we are in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Yung disciples po, 12 lang sila, but they turned the world upside down. Yung mga matatalino ay napahiya dahil itong mga hindi nag-aaral at mga fishermen, nung ginamit sila ng Holy Spirit, nung ginamit sila ng Panginoon, in-empower sila ng Holy Spirit, nagtaka lahat ang mga tao sa paligid nila. Sino tong mga taong to? These men are un- uneducated and yet they preach with authority, with power. So I'm seeing right now an army of God ready to expand the kingdom and to change the world, to change the very country that we live in. At patuloy po natin declare na ang bansang Pilipinas ay para sa Diyos. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. The Philippines is for Christ! Amen. Let's pray na bago po dumating yung Panginoon, we can see a mighty flood of revival. How many are praying for that? Amen. Before the, the, Jesus will come and return again, pag pray po natin na makita natin yung matinding revival na gagawin ng Panginoon, and I pray na yung Dark City Church will play its role, its part on that end time harvest. So this is our mission, church, to build and expand His kingdom so that everyone can come to know and receive the love of God. That's why with this, church, we need to think in terms of generations. Come on, say generations. generations. I want to, to go back dun po sa story ni Abraham in Hebrews 11, 8, na sabi po dyan, by faith, Abraham, when called to, to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, come and say, obeyed, obeyed. and went, Amen. even though he did not know where he was going. So God called Abraham po into a new inheritance. Nung tinawag po ng Panginoon si Abraham, hindi niya alam kung saan siya dadalhin ng Panginoon, pero sumunod lang po siya basta. 
Alam niyo po, naghahanap po yung Panginoon ngayon ng mga ganong klaseng kristyano na basta sinabi ng Panginoon kahit hindi nila alam kung ano yung detalye, susunod sila. Are there any Christians na kamukha po nun? Sometimes tayo, sanay tayo dun sa nakalatag, sanay tayo dun sa blueprint, ganito siya gagawin. Pero yung faith po, the just shall live by faith and we walk by faith and not by sight. Pag tinawag tayo ng Panginoon, huwag mong hintayin kung ano yung plano, gagalaw ka muna pag, pag okay na, naiintindihan mo, no, hindi po faith yon. Yung faith po, kahit hindi mo naiintindihan, kahit hindi mo alam kung anong mangyayari bukas, yung faith sumusunod agad sa Panginoon because delayed obedience is still disobedience. Hello? I pray that we will be like our father in faith, Father Abraham, na may ganong klase ng pananampalataya. And we know the story of Abraham first. God uh, uh, changed his name from, from Abram, which means uh, exalted father, to Abraham, na yung meaning po is a father of multitude. And Abraham walked in the land of his inheritance like a stranger in a foreign country. Sa verse 9, nasabi po dyan, by faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. Imagine mo, iiwan niya yung nakasanayan niya and he lived in tents. Sumusunod lang po siya kung saan siya dadalhin ng Panginoon as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him of the same promise. And in verse 10, makikita po natin dito that Abraham waited for a city whose, whose foundations and maker and builder is God. But as we try to, to, to fast forward yung story po ni Abraham, alam niyo po that Abraham died in faith in his generation without receiving the promise. Mula po umpisa hanggang dulo ang kwento po ni Abraham ay kwento ng pananampalataya. But here's the thing, hindi niya na po nakuha or natanggap yung pangako ng Panginoon in his lifetime. Ano sabi ng Hebrews 11.13? All these people, dito po sa Hebrews 11, yung hall of faith, di ba? by faith, Enoch, by faith, Noah, all these people were still living by faith when they died. Listen, they did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. So imagine, ito pong mga taong to, pinangakuan ng Panginoon. And yet, during their lifetime, hindi po nila nakita yung pangako ng Panginoon. They had not yet received the promise. They had seen them afar off. They were assured of the promise of God. They embraced the promise. And they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Church, listen. Abraham understood that God intended to fulfill His promise to Abraham through successive generations. Ito po yung importansya na tayo po ay nag-iisip ng generationally. Kasi kung titingnan po natin, God gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob each a part of His plan as outlined in their generation. Lahat po yun, si Abraham, si Isaac, si Jacob, ay meron po silang parte doon po sa pangako ng Panginoon sa kanila. Pastor, paano natin na-apply ito sa ating heart for the house? Alam niyo po, ang Diyos, pag po nagplano siya, God plans things not only, listen, for our generation, but for those that come after them. Ulitin ko po, gising po tayo, lahat na mata dito, ang Diyos po paggubalaw, ang Diyos pag nagplano, hindi lang po siya nagpaplano na nakakonfine lang dun sa generation natin, but even His plans are bigger than this generation. His plans are always, not just for this generation, but to the next and to the next, even to the fourth generation. Ganyan po nagpaplano ang Panginoon. 
Hebrews 11, 39 to 40. These people, these were all commended for their faith. Yet not one of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Tayo po, this, this heart for the house is not just a simple program. But I want to tell you, church, this heart for the house is a vision within a bigger vision. This is how we should see things. We should see them generationally. That what we are building now would benefit the coming generation. So, listen. Lahat po ng ginagawa natin dito, what we're doing, all of the things that we do to build His kingdom. Pinagpe-pray natin ito. We are sowing financially. We are serving. Lahat pong ito is not just for our generation, but even to the generations to come. Hello? By saying this, I am now thinking of my, 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 my children. Even po yung paglaki ni Amaze at ni Ablaze, maybe after ko, tatawagin ng Panginoon si, si Pastor Ablaze. I don't know. Kung paano po tinawag si Pastor Rod? Can we honor my parents, Pastor Rod, Pastor Rabet? Can we give them a hand for serving and, you know, sila po yung nauna who have built the foundations of the church. And I, am now, and I am now standing on that foundation that they built. I am now standing on the sacrifices of my parents and the people, kasama po kayo, who have toiled and prayed and labored for 30 plus years sa church natin. And you know, we have a part to play here. Ngayon po sa generation natin, the coming generation will benefit sa gagawin natin ngayon. Hello? Amen. Our kids and grandkids will benefit from this heart for the house na gagawin po natin. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. You need to understand this, that each generation should build in such a way that the next generation can build on what the former generation has done rather than starting over. This is the principle of inheritance. Diba pa parang sa mana, yung pinagpagura ng magulang, ito na yon ipapasa niya. Katulad po ng verse na binasa natin kanina, pinangako sa kanilang forefathers, titira kayo sa mga bahay, sabi doon, na hindi nyo tinayo. Iinom kayo sa mga cisterns na hindi naman kayo nag-igib. Yun po yung principle of inheritance. Are you getting this? Na maipapasa po natin to sa kanila. Kaya po itong vision natin, church, its generation must have a vision that outlives itself. Ito pong planong to, hindi lang to basta plano na inisip, okay, baka ano lang yan, pang hype, or maybe yung heart for the house, pang plano lang yan para, alam mo yon uh, makakuha pa tayo ng, ng mag-increase yung budget natin sa church. Hindi po to basta-basta lang ginagawa ng hindi pinag-isipan. We are thinking generationally. And its generation must have a vision, again, that outlives itself. If my vision, church, if our vision can be fulfilled in, in our lifetime, I think it is not generational. And therefore, it is not big enough. Kung sa ating lifetime magagawa natin yung vision, hindi po siya ganun kalaki. Pero kung yung vision sobrang laki, na after yung generation na ito, itutuloy pa ng next generation at next generation, ganun po natin mapapatunayan na malaki po yung vision na yon. Here are some of the generational thinkers na hindi lang po nila inisip yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon but ni-ready din po nila yung mga susunod na generation. 
Let's talk about Moses. Kung paano po he prepared si Joshua para po sa mga ipapagawa ng Panginoon. Nandiyan si Elijah. He prepared Elisha. Jesus, na alam niya po na hindi siya magtatagal dito sa mundo. And yet, he, the disciple niya po yung 12. He prepared his 12 disciples. And also Paul who prepared Timothy. Ganyan po dapat tayo mag-isip dito sa darak. Our lives are short like a vapor, sabi ng Psalm 39 verse 5. And although our life is short, if we use it right, church, then we can have an impact to the generations to come. Kaya kailangan po nating maintindihan dito that the God of the Bible is a generational God. Come on, say that with me, generational God. Generation. Yung Dios po na sinasamba natin, He is a generational God. Kanina po dun sa verse 10 na binasa natin, nagpakilala po siya as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I also remember when God spoke to, to Moses doon sa burning bush. Tama po ba? Sabi ni Moses, Lord, pag tinanong nila, sino nagsabi nito, anong sasabihin ko, sasabi niya, tell the people, I am who I am. And then, sinabi pa po ng Panginoon ulit sa kanya, sabihin mo sa mga tao, ako yung Diyos ng yung mga ninuno, I am the God of your forefathers, sabihin mo sa mga tao that I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ganito mo dapat ako ipapakilala even sa mga susunod na henerasyon. Makita po natin, malinaw, He is a generational God. But not only that, He is not only a generational God, but come on, listen to this, He's creating a generational people. Kaya po, itong ginagawa natin, hindi lang po dapat, again, tayo nagpo-focus dito sa generation natin, but we need to honor the former generation na nauna sa atin and we need to empower or to fuel the younger generation that is coming behind us. Katulad po na napag-usapan natin nung Sunday na hindi man po inalaw ng Panginoon si David na mag-build ng templo at ang kanyang anak na si Solomon yung nag-build at pwedeng sabihin ni David Hindi ako sure kung buhay pa ako niyan. Lord, wala na akong, labas na ako dyan, pero yung ginawa po niya because he has set his affection on God and on his house. Pinrepair niya po yung kakailanganin ng kanyang anak na si Solomon. Tama po ba? Hindi na may katabi mo kung gising pa. Amen. At pinrepair po ni David yung kakailanganin ng kanyang anak. That's a perfect example of a generational thinker. Katulad ni David, pinrepair niya. At yun po ang ginagawa natin dito sa heart for the house. Listen, this is very important. Older generation and the younger generation must need to unite in order for us to advance the kingdom of God. Nasaan po yung mga model ko dyan? Pwede po ba natin tawagin? Amen. I, I want to, to illustrate this further dahil po itong church po natin is, yeah, it's multi-generational. We have alpha generation, nandiyan yung mga millennials, baby boomers. Ito po in real life ay sila po talaga ay mag-ama. Okay? By the way, Brother June is my uncle. And uh, he now serves at the guest experience team. Sino po nakakita sa kanya? Palangpangan po natin sila. At ang kanyang anak na si Saji ay serving sa, sa creative ministry natin. So, sige po, uh, dito si Saji. Ayan. Pwede kayo magkapit, bisig. Ayan. Ayan, sweet. Amen. Ayan. So, um, I want to simply divide, for example, this, this church into the older and the younger generation. So this is the older generation and the younger generation. I remember 
the verse in Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 to 6, Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. At alam niyo po, yung verse ng last book of the Testament, it says there, nandiyan po ba yung verse natin sa Malachi? Nasabi ng Panginoon, I will turn the hearts of their fathers to their children and the hearts of their children to their fathers. Sabi ng Panginoon, pag-iisahin ko sila. This is the best time for this church to unite yung older and younger generation. Can I hear an amen? amen. Gusto ko pong pakita, for example, the older generation. Maybe, it doesn't mean, yeah, uh, maybe for the older, may edad ka na, or for those Christians who are like 10, 20, 30 years and up ka ng Kristiyano, that represents this older generation. Older generation, I want to speak to you. I want to talk to you right now. Because if we will not be aware, meron tayong thinking, katulad nito. Pastor, matuwa na ako. Matanda na ako. We have this wrong mentality that I have already seen it, experienced it. Tapos na ako dyan, pastor, nakita ko na yan. Nung bata kami, yan. Diba? Nung bata kami, ang init ko kay Lord. In love na in love ako kay Lord. When we were young, like you guys, we are so fired up. nire mo yung dati. At hindi ka aware na sa paggawa mo nun, yung kaisipan mo, parang sinasabi mo, tapos na kami, kayo na. Are you getting this? Come on. Parang pinapakita natin na instead na magkaisa, ngayon na divide po tayo at sabihin natin, kayo na. Panahon nyo na. Oras nyo na. Tapos na kami dyan. We're done with it. I've already seen that. I've already experienced that. What is more to expect? Yan po yung pinapakita ng kaisipan ng mga older. But older generation, I'm here to tell you, we need you at the Rock City Church. Yeah. Ulitin ko po. Older generation, we need you. We need the guidance of the older generation. We need fathers, spiritual fathers and mothers dito po sa kwarto. Sino pong mag-guide sa ibang mga bata dito? We need your wisdom. Mas nauna po kayo sa amin. Marami na po kayong karanasan. At yung karanasan na yan ay hindi para itago. Yung karanasan na yan ay para ituro sa mga bata so that yung pagkakamali nyo, hindi na nila magawa. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom. And siyempre po, yung bata, ano ma-offer din ng, ng bata ngayon? Kung resources na pag-usapan, yung mga older, yung mas may resources. Tama po ba? And the next is what? Is this, the younger generation. Sino po dito mga kabataan? Can I see hands? Youth or maybe thir- 35 below or five, five years ka palang kristyano. This represents the younger generation. Yung mindset naman po, makinig po, yung mindset ng, 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 ng younger, ay matanda na sila. Di na sila makakasabay. Matwa na lang. Kaya ngayon mga bata ngayon, nagpapaturo lang paano mag-cellphone yung magulang nyo, napipikon kayo eh. Papang sampu ko ng turo sa'yo yan. Ganito kasi eh, oh. Tama? Nakikita nyo yung gap? Tama? May gap eh. Yung tingin natin sa mga older generation, tapos na sila, laos na. This is our generation now. This is our time now. Ganun yung isip natin. Pero younger generation, I'm here to tell you, we need you here at the Rock City Church. Hello? Young people! We need you. This is the season tayo po bilang youth. Ako po nag-start ako bilang youth as a youth pastor. Ito po yung season na punong-puno tayo ng vigor, ng strength. 
ng stamina. Kaya sabi po ng Ecclesiastes, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Young people, taas kamay ng young people. Young people, young adult, young professionals. Come on, come on, raise your hands. Wag nyong sayangin yung oras nyo ngayon. Hello? Wag nyong sayangin sa kakatrial and error. Wag nyong sayangin na yung buong experience mo ng youth, buong journey mo, wala kang ginawa kundi maganap ng boyfriend, maganap ng girlfriend, tapos na ako dito, dito na naman sa iba. Ang laki ng purpose ni Lord sa buhay mo para mag-boyfriend, girlfriend lang yung isipin mo. Huwag mong sayangin doon. Ang laki ng plano ni Lord sa iyo. God has so much in store for you. Hello? Nandito yung strength. Malakas ka pa, bata ka pa. What's the best thing to do with this age? Serve the Lord. Maglingkod ka. Paglingkuran mo si Lord. Aanin mo pa yung buhay na to. Gusto mo pa pag after 50, 60, 65, 70 years old ka na at nanghihina ka na. Gusto mo ba? Kung, kung kailan 70 ka na, may oxygen ka na dito, doon mo sinasabi, Pastor, pwede bang mag-serve? Pastor, I want to serve the Lord even I'm 74. I'm not making fun of old people. What I'm saying here is yung, 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 yung oras na sinayang mo. Habang kayo naririnig mo ngayon, ano pang gagawin mo sa buhay? Magpakayaman? Anong gagawin mo? Wala masamang gumawa ng may mga plano tayo, may vision tayo sa buhay. Yes. Patayo ka ng bahay, makabili ka nito. Importante po yan, but you need to understand. Doon po si Abraham nga, even those people in Hebrews 11, they have not received the promise of God during their lifetime. Because they understand that they are just sojourners dito po sa mundo. Nakikidaan lang dito sa lupa. Nakikidaan lang. Kasi itong lupa, hindi ito yung final destination natin. Doon tayo sa langit kasama yung Panginoon. I'm challenging you. We have a part to play. Instead of magbangayan tayo, telling yung differences natin, it's time for us to, to unite. The older and the younger generation needs to come as one. To unite so that we can advance the kingdom of God. Tigilan na natin kung anong differences ng dalawa. Pag-usapan natin anong magagawa natin together. We need the older generation and we also need the younger generation. Palakpakan po natin yung Panginoon. Marami pong salamat sa Alianigi family. Nakuha po ba natin? So huwag niyo sabihin, Pastor, yari na ako again. I'm done with it, Pastor. No! As long as we're breathing, as long as there is strength, there is air in your lungs, continue to serve the Lord, continue to love the Lord. Hindi tayo tinawag ni Lord, umupo-upo dyan, magpalamig. Hindi ka tinawag ni Lord, mag-obserba dyan. I'm saying this, frankly, with love. Hindi tayo tinawag ni Lord, magpakyut dyan. Magbutas ng bangko dyan, Hindi. Tinawag ka ni Lord para tumayo, maglingkod sa Kanya. I want to end with this. Then excited na po ako mag-balling. Gumaganya ng kamay ko. Okay, joke lang po. So what happens when we do not build generationally? Ano po bang pwedeng mangyari pag hindi tayo ganyan mag-isip? I want to give you three examples. Number one, when we do not build generational, we put our emphasis on programs rather than people. Yung church, pwede po siyang maging busy, creating programs after programs. Programs are good, but people 
as our focus rather than programs. Yung focus natin dito yung tao. Tama po ba? I love this verse in Acts 13, 36 na sabi po dito, for David, look at this, after he had served, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. Ano po sabi dyan? After he had served his own generation. Ang tanong tayo po ba, anong ginagawa natin sa generation natin ngayon? Are we serving? Or are we watching? Are we waiting? Hello? Again, tao po yung pinaka-importante dito sa church. That's why we put emphasis more on people rather than programs. And what we do here sa Darak, yung mga programa po natin, listen, our programs are people-focused. For example, our bowling fellowship, we, are, we have created that bowling fellowship so that yung mga men po magkasama-sama. O yung problema, nagkikreate ang church ng, 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 ng programa para sa inyo, tas kayo wala. Hello? Oh, ayan na. Kaya sinasabi ko po, isang oras lang po yun. Yung iba sa inyo, pumasyal muna kayo, balikan yung asawa nyo. Lahat po dito, itulak nyo sa bowling center mamaya. Pag-usapan po natin kung sino hindi able magbayad, marami pong willing magbayad dyan. Maraming willing mag-sponsor dyan. O, oh, mga babae pa nag amen ngayon. Oh. Maraming mga women dito magsasponsor sa kanilang asawa. Kaya po ginawa natin ng linggo. Alam ko po family dito, pero isang oras lang naman. <laughs> One hour lang po na fellowship so that mag-grow din yung mga, mag-enjoy naman po. Tama po. So, yan po yung, yung focus natin, tao. Pangalawa, ano po nangyayari pag hindi tayo generational mag-isip? Number two, people quit serving God. Dito po, takot ako mangyari to kaya nga as much as possible, painaulit-ulit ko pong sinasabi na tumayo tayo, maglingkod po tayo. Joshua 24, 31. Listen, look at this. Medyo scary po to. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua who had known all the works of the Lord which he had done for Israel. In short, as long as Joshua was alive, the people served the Lord. Nung buhay po si Joshua, naglilingkod sila pero nakakalungkot at nakakatakot nung wala na po si Joshua. Biglang liko na po ang Israel. Kung wag jump po tayo sa 2 Chronicles 10.16, look at this. When Israel realized that the king had refused to listen to them, they responded, down with the dynasty of David. We have no interest in the son of Jesse. Tignan nyo sila magsalita. Back to your homes, O Israel. Look out for your own house, O David. So all the people of Israel returned home. Tignan po natin, no? Namuhay po ng, hindi po perfect yung buhay ni David, but he was called a man after God's own heart. Then next, was Solomon, yung anak po ni David, here's the problem. Solomon did not prepare his sons to serve their generation. I think, importante po ito. If you are here as a father, as a mother, you have served the Lord well, you need also to make sure that your children and their children's children will serve the Lord. Hindi po dapat natatapos sa inyo yung paglilingkod sa Panginoon. You need to make sure that you will pass it on to your children and their children's children. Because this is what happened to Solomon's son, Rehoboam, na hindi na po siya nakikinig to the elders who, walk, who had walked under his father. Instead, Rehoboam listened to his peers. Thus, the kingdom was divided. 
pag-ingatan po natin ito. At dito po ako matatapos. Number three, ano po mangyayari pag di po tayo nag-isip generationally, we did not build we do not we did not build generational number three, the people will become corrupt and are eventually destroyed. Second Kings twenty one. Basahin nyo na lang po sa bahay, 1 to 16. But few verse po na babasahin ko, sabi dito, Manase wiped out the righteous reforms accomplished by his father Hezekiah. Yung tinayo ng kanyang tatay, tinanggal niya. As a result, God promised to wipe them out as a dish is wiped clean and turned upside down. Ito pong tatlong bagay na to ayaw nating makita sa ating iglesia. Kaya po, hinihimok ko po yung bawat isa. I'm encouraging everyone that we should think generationally. This house, the Rock City Church, is a house for all generations. What we're doing here, we're building God's kingdom, praying, sowing, even the, the heart for the house offering na malilikom po natin is not just for this generation, but for the coming generations. Imagine, we are sowing for our future. We are sowing. You are sowing for your kids and your grandkids to be. Na masasabi mo, tumanda ka pero naging part ka, hindi nila alam na yung generasyon mo, may ginawa ka, kaya nai-enjoy na nila ngayon yun. Yan po yung gusto nating mangyari dito sa Dark City Church. So I hope that this word has blessed you and has changed you the way you see things and the way we give, the way we pray, the way we build, we build God's kingdom. Palakpangan po natin yung Panginoon. That's the end of my message about building God's house for all generations. I'm inviting everyone to please stand, tatayo po tayo right now.